I got coffee on my skirt. If you click onto this video because of the age I've put in the title, I just want to say something quickly. Age is not the most important factor in this story. I just happened to start my pottery business at the age of 23, but for you, it could be any age. Timing is the most important thing not age. To be honest, I only put in there for the sake of the algorithm. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's get started. My name is Garbo, I'm a potter based in Montreal, Canada. Our studio is called Grumpy Kid Studio. We sell a bunch of grumpy ceramics, just like the brown mug that I was just drinking out of. You can shop them on our website, link in bio. I mean, description. So in this video, I'll be structuring it in five different parts. I will talk about my background, why I chose ceramics, how to set up a studio in my parents' living room, how to sell, and the last one is what I would have done differently. So let's talk about my background, more specifically educational background and career background. I went to university here in Toronto for architecture. I don't think I've always wanted to do architecture since I was a kid, but it combines two of my major interests, which was math and art. So before I graduated from school, I had a couple internships. I had a taste of what it's like working in the industry. Through those internships is when I realized architecture is not really something that I wanted to do forever. For context, in Toronto, most of the new builds we got here are either custom homes where you serve a very small group of people or condo buildings where there is just not a lot of design. I graduated in 2020 and I was very lucky to have a job lined up before I graduated. So I was working from home at the time during the pandemic with not much to do on my hand. I baked a lot of banana bread, made tons of bagels. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. And that kind of sets the tone of why I got into ceramics. I actually bought a bag of air dry clay from Amazon because Mother's Day was coming up and I wanted to make something for my mom. There was also an urge in me that wanted to create something with my hands. During my day job, I would just sit in front of a computer doing all those architecture modeling without touching anything physical. Air dry clay seems like the perfect medium for me to get into creating again. You don't need to spend a lot of money on like a kiln for ceramics, for example. So after the plate that I made for my mom, I still had a lot of leftover materials. I just started making plates, vases, things with funny faces on it. And there is actually not that much of a story behind those faces. I think it's about giving an animate object a face will transform them into a more interesting looking thing it's not really that deep and after i have curated some sort of a collection i started posting them online i've created a separate instagram account for it back then i don't even remember what i call the instagram it's probably something like garbo makes stuff or something it was not grumpy kid studio right off the bat i will try to look it up for you guys oh, it's probably gonna be something really embarrassing and very slowly i gained a very small group of followers i think it was around like i don't know 60 of them or 80 of them and back then i was like whoa this is like a lot of followers because they're all strangers on the internet why would they like my stuff honestly i thought i was famous already with 80 followers i get dms of people asking me hey do you sell your stuff and that's when i started to think that oh I guess I could sell my stuff, but the thing is they're made with air dry clay. I don't even know what you're gonna do with it because it's not food safe, it's purely decorative. And that's when I started to think that maybe I should choose a different material rather than only using air dry clay. And the first material that popped into my mind is ceramics. So I pull up my computer, Google ceramic studio near me, and very fortunately I have one studio that was about five minutes from where my parents live. It's like really like right there. So I walk into the store and I told the owner, hey, um, this is what I made with air dry clay. How can I turn that into ceramics? And the owner looked at it and she was like, oh, you know what? Maybe you can just start with hand building. So during that session, I learned a lot about hand building, but there's something that you need to know about me is that I'm quite impatient, even though that place is only five minutes away. I wanna be able to hand build when I'm not in their studio as well. I wanna be able to do it at home when I'm watching, I don't know, Netflix. So I bought a bag of clay and all the essential tools that you need for hand building from a pottery shop and the rest is history. The next part is how I set up in my parents' living room. The thing about ceramics is that there are certain things that you just can't really do at home. The first thing is washing your hands in the sink. But that one is easier to solve, especially at the time I was only doing hand building because I can just wash it in a bucket and then pour it out. The second thing that you can't really do at home, and it's also a very crucial part about ceramics, is the kiln. And when I was doing ceramics at home, I have to find a place that I will be able to fire my pieces at at a reasonable price because the studio that I was going into, they were charging me, I think, 40 to $50 just to fire one piece. It's not quite affordable. You know what I mean? Like how much am I supposed to sell my stuff if you're charging me $40 just to fire them? Here is a little Google hack. Instead of trying to find kiln rental service near me, just look for a pottery studio near you, call them up one by one and just to ask, hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to get into ceramics and I want a place that will be able to fire my pieces and ask them for their price 
price and if they offer that service. And here's a little heads up. A lot of places won't fire your pieces unless you make it in their studio. There will be some that are like, okay, yeah, I guess we can do that. And you can negotiate a little deal with them. And that's what I did. I'll be making all my pieces at home with hand building and I will paint on them with underglaze, wait for them to dry fully. And I will take all those bone dry pieces to the pottery studio. And about a week or two later, I'll pick them up, glaze them at home and then bring them to the pottery shop again to get them fired for the second time. I think I did that for at least three or four months before I saved up to buy my own kiln. A tip that I would give for you guys that are trying to start your pottery studio at home is that instead of trying to do everything in ceramics, including hand building, slip casting, wheel throwing, all at once, I would just start with the easiest one. The most important thing is not to learn everything at once, but just to get your foot into the ceramics world, learning it a bit by bit, slowly and steadily, and eventually you will learn everything, but you have to start somewhere. And that starting somewhere is hand building for me. I was doing hand building for at least half a year before I consider maybe it's time for me to move on to a different technique. Remember, I was still working in my construction day job at the time. So during the day, I'll be sitting at home doing my computer stuff, click, click, click. And then at night, I'll be pinching my mugs and my plates using very similar muscles on your fingers. And then at the end, my hand will get cramped up so bad that I couldn't even hold the mug that I made myself which is really sad to say that. And it was around that time that I started discovering more and more about the process. And I see people on the internet making mugs through a different method called slip casting. The material you need for slip casting is a plaster mold and liquid clay that you call slip. You pour the slip into the mold, it dries out, and then you pour it out, you wait for it to dry even more, and then you pop the mug out of the mold and you got a mug. But the thing about that process that I didn't know about is that it's actually really messy. Ooh, the camera was overheating, so that's why I moved you guys to the shades, but let's continue the story. Story. What were we talking about? Oh, slip casting. Oh, but I think I forgot to tell you guys what I was doing with all my hand pinch mugs. So for the mugs I made with hand building, I was already selling them, but each month I could probably only make around 20-ish mugs. And back then, I didn't even think of this as marketing. I was just documenting my process on my phone. Like, hey guys, I got new clay. I got new underglaze. Let's try out this color. It was more like a journey for me to share with my audience instead of trying to tell them that, hey, I have a launch coming soon. I have a launch coming soon. Because that was not my goal at the time. Time. I still had a day job so that was my main source of income and for mugs are just something that I was doing for fun and but now it's kind of funding my life which is kind of insane to think about that through sharing my process I started attracting more and more followers and people are actually interested in buying my mugs and that's when I started to curate a little collection my first sale I had 20 mugs and I did it through Instagram story sale if you're into chaos I would highly recommend that but if you're not into chaos and you would love to know about who actually bought your stuff instead of trying to search through DMs, I would not recommend selling through that way. After that first launch, I knew that I need to build a website ASAP. The first website I used was Wix and the second one I used was Shopify. I can make another video talking about websites. Let me know in the comments if you want to hear more about that. And after doing a couple drops with hand building, that's when my hands got tired and that's when I got slip casting molds. Whew, we're all caught up in the story now. At this time, it's been around six months since I have started to do ceramic and I've slowly taken more and more space in my parents' living room. At first, it was just a desk and now I've taken up a different shelf to store my pieces and another shelf that I bought off Facebook Marketplace to put at the back with all the packing supplies. So I'm slowly taking over the living room space and very luckily, even though my parents are Asian parents, they don't really care too much about what I do with my free time. Now thinking about it, I don't think they care too much about what I do for my job either or maybe because they trust in me. I'm very grateful that they let me use their living room. Love you parents. And here is a little bit about investing back into your business. At this time, I save a pretty good chunk of money. It wasn't actually that much. It was like $2,000 or $3,000 through selling my mugs online. I was talking to my best friend who is an accountant that I'm thinking to buy my first kiln. As I was having that conversation with her, she asked me, hey, have you registered a business yet? And I was like, no because for me at the time, it was not really a business. It's just something that I sell and people buy and I have money because they buy my stuff. Now thinking about it, it was already a small business, a very small micro business. And she said, you have to register your business so that you have a business bank account. And that's when you can use business bank account to buy supplies, equipment, and do your taxes properly. A bunch of work that she threw at me and I was like, okay. It was the last day of 2020, like actually, December 31st, I registered my business as a corporation. Don't really ask me why because my friend told me to. I guess I could make another video out of that maybe. 
And at this point, it's already 2021, a new year, I have my business set up, still at my parents' place, working at home. I bought myself a new kiln with the money that I have saved up from selling my mugs. It's okay to have a kiln in your house. I highly recommend you talk to an electrician before you buy your kiln to make sure that you can actually install one. For my kiln back then, I put it in the garage because you don't want to put it in the same space where you live from. So if you're in an apartment, I don't think I would recommend getting a kiln just because you live and breathe the same air as toxic air is coming out of the kiln. The new kiln in the garage plus all the slip casting mold i'm making more and more pieces now than ever and during this time i was having a lot of fun experimenting with different techniques and different patterns there's so much to learn about ceramics and that's why i suggest you guys to take your time don't start making it into a business right away just to have some fun document the whole process it's not just for social media but it's also for yourself to look back at this time i was doing one drop per month i think it was around 50 items every single drop I was trying out different themes every time because i want to try out which style i prefer and which style you guys preferred slowly as time goes it's summer again so i decided maybe it's time for me to buy a wheel i couldn't put the wheel inside because i don't want to further burden my parents even more with all the clay flying around but since summer was coming i bought a wheel and put it in my parents backyard and started practicing right away and here is one thing i would regret which is i should have gone to a pottery studio to learn about the wheel before i bought it oh my goodness it was actually really hard to learn about myself and at this time i I switched to a different job where I needed to go to work every single day so I would drive to work and after I came back from work I would go to my parents backyard straight away after dinner of course and start practicing on the wheel it took me roughly one month to learn how to center and during that time I wasn't selling anything at all because well I couldn't make anything to sell and my muscle was cramping constantly because I was using the wrong muscle I went to the chiropractor every single week <sighs> should have gone to a pottery studio to avoid all of this burden but eventually i got good at it and that's when i started developing a little routines during the summer i would throw outside to make as many mugs as possible and in the winter i would slip cast or hand build inside and that's what i did for the remaining of 2021 that's when i started to realize that maybe this is an actual business i could run by myself without having a real job for me it was the right time to quit my day job because first i was burned out physically and mentally but i don't know how to explain it even though i was extremely exhausted there was still a drive within me i think the drive was from the fact that i really want to have my own business as something that i've always wanted to do since i was younger probably one of the few things i'm really certain about in my life oh is that kind of sad to say that? Anyways, it was this drive that really motivated me to work hard. I remember one of the months I was making two to three times my monthly salary than I was making in my construction day job. And that's when I knew I should probably quit this job and do ceramics full time. Okay, we're really close to the end. There are only two more topics we need to cover. And this one is about how to sell. The only reason we can be here today is because of social media. It's very hard to pinpoint exactly what I did correctly or what I shouldn't have done with social media because it's just so unpredictable. But there are definitely a few things that I would do it again and again if I were to start all over today. And number one is consistency. And by consistency, I don't mean that you have to post the same type of content every single day. But I mean that you have to be present. You have to be here show up online for your audience you should make making content a part of your day it could be setting up a tripod near your workstation so it's easier for you to set up your camera instead of trying to refigure out the whole filming situation every time you have to film it's about reducing friction and increasing efficiency and another tip that we have is to accept slow and organic growth instead of trying to be viral overnight post the content that you think would inform your audience about your products. When I was starting out my account, I didn't post with the goal to sell my product. I posted just because I want to share with my audience about the cool stuff that I was making and the things I was learning along the way. And trust me, the audience could sense that and that would motivate them to learn more about your journey. Comment down below if you have any questions regarding social media marketing and I will try my best to answer them in the next one. We we'll always recommend having smaller drops in the beginning so you can have time to learn about what people like and don't like about the stuff that you're making and lean into what they're reacting to. I think we're really close to the end now this is the last topic anything i would do differently i think i mentioned a couple of them already but this one really stood out to me is that you need to set up a business right away even though you're not sure about oh i don't know how much money i'm going to make with this business or if i want to do this long term or this is just for fun it's always important to do things the right way so you have a business account set up so bookkeeping and everything will be a lot easier down the line and you don't have to scratch your head looking for all the receipts during tax season and don't be afraid to invest in your business we invest everything that we make back into our business but it's very important to invest in the right things instead of investing in i don't know 
super colorful wrapping papers that cost you two dollar extra per package pins wheels even labor is highly recommended instead of the small things that probably you're the only one that cares about and always remember to have fun the amazing thing about being in the beginning stages of a business is that you have so much to try out this is when you can explore different styles and different techniques and really build a closer connection with your audience because those are the people that will purchase from you and support you along your journey try to not stress about social media even though i know it's very hard not to sometimes but i can guarantee if you're having fun your audience could feel it as well and they will support you in return. It's also very important to remember why you're doing this. Right now, I have my own studio space with four part-time employees, but I still would find things to complain about. Not making enough pieces, we're not styling them fast enough, materials too expensive, our space is too small. But when I thought about the beginning stages of my journey, when I started in my parents' living room back there, and just remembering why I started this business is because I want to get myself out of my job. I just want to do something with my hand. I want to be flexible with my schedule. Very grateful that I have accomplished those thanks to the help of my family, my parents especially, and my friends, and all of you guys supporting me on the internet. If there's anything that I missed in this video that you would like to learn more about, especially about the beginning stages of starting your own small business, comment down below. I will try my best to answer them in the next one. I'm nervous to be more open about my story. I filmed this video probably like two or three times. I'm really bad at talking in front of a camera. You can probably tell that I'm like super nervous. Let me know if you guys like to hear more about my story. If not, that's fine too. But if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe, notification bell, all the good stuff. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. You can do it. Bye. Mosquito is near me. The big fly. Oh, I think I see a bee. Eek. I was really fortunate to have a... Oh, is that an eagle?